Hello again, Michael Freeberg here from beautiful North Carolina. Today is going to be a bit of a special shave. It's uh, basically a shave based on gifts from others, including a trial straight razor from Eric Schuett, who is also the person who was generous enough to provide me with uh, a Big Shave limited edition 2014 brush. Um, he found out that I was gonna pass on mine to my son, and he bought a second one and passed it on to me. So thank you very much for the, uh, for the brush, uh, as well as for the loan of this Boker 5 8 round tip straight razor, which I'll be using today for the first time. Um, I'm also going to be shaving with a soap uh, that is relatively new to me, but which may be familiar to some of you. It's the E. Coloniali, the mango soap. Um, just to be completely clear, this is not a mango scented soap. It's a soap using mango oil. Um, it has a really intriguing scent. It's kind of hard to describe. It smells quite a bit like cedar shavings, a bit of incense and kind of a deep sweetness to it. Very difficult to put your finger on exactly what this smells like, other than I can tell you it smells amazing. It's the kind of soap that you really can't say exactly what it reminds you of, but you're gonna keep coming back to give it a good little sniff every now and then, as odd as that may sound. It does also, by the way, come in two formats. You can just get a refill, the refill puck, or you can get it in this terracotta dish. Um, the terracotta dish is reputed by some to have magical lathering properties. That's all bunk, but it is a pretty cool dish and you can definitely use it for other soap pucks or even put some softer soaps in there just to sort of decant them into there. I'm also going to be using a another gift, just amazing generosity from people around you. It's just, it's, it's kind of amazing. Um, this is a badger hair brush. It was made by a colleague of mine at work who normally does things like uh, very kind of artistic woodworked uh, salad bowls and tongs, um, very artistic uh, kind of bent to his woodworking. I had mentioned there's a lot of interest in custom uh, shaving brush handles, as I'm sure we're all aware of. And so he surprised me the last day of work last year with this Bloodwood Badger Hair, which has this double band of lapis inset. It's been fantastic. It's a, I think it's a golden nib. Um, the knot is set quite high but it makes for a very, very nice face lathering brush. I'm gonna be using that today as well. So I already have some pre-shave on. Let me go ahead and get the uh, get the soap lathered up. I'll get my brush loaded, I'll wet my face, get lathered up, and then we'll uh, wipe off the blade and see how it goes with this straight razor. I'll probably only be doing a with the grain pass followed by another, another pass after that, just to get a feel for it. Um, Eric has honed it, it looks fantastic. I should get three good shades on without having to go through and strop it. I have no equipment to do that with, so it's three or four shaves maybe and then pass it back. So here we go, let's get the brush brush loading. This is definitely a hard soap. It's one of these soaps where you can't just load for sort of five or 10 seconds and then think that all is well. Um, I have definitely had better luck using a bit of a drier brush and just dripping water into it as I've built a lather. Wet brush for me um, just built kind of a very sudsy, foamy lather that didn't really come together. So starting off with a bit of a bit of a drier bit of a dryer brush here. A little under the weather too, we've had uh, flu sort of sweeping through our open floor plant office, as well as with a cold that's been laying people out for a couple days, definitely fighting it off. It don't feel completely perfect, but no matter, still gonna go for it. All right. That looks pretty well loaded from the magic terracotta dish. Let me get my face wet. I already have some of the Pro Rosso White pre-shave on. Go and drip a bit of water onto the face of the brush. Make sure that this starts off good and wet as well. And let's go ahead and lather up. This is a vegetable-based soap, no tallow. Excellent lather. Comes together very quickly. Slick. Not drying on the skin at all. And when you rinse it, it leaves a very, very nice slick layer. All right, that needs a bit more water. All right, there we go. Get this a little bit thinner than usual, maybe. All right. These lathers have generally come together pretty quickly. You could obviously keep working this and build into a big fluffy ginormous face beard. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it a little bit wet and a little bit slack. 
There we go. Yeah, liking that brush is a big surprise at the end of the year. Very grateful for that gift. All right, I'll dry off my hands. Let's unfurl the blade. I'm gonna wipe it, wipe off the oil. There we go. Now, let's go ahead and give this a try. Just wet the blade a little bit. Skin tight, easy angle. Now, I definitely understand, by the way, the complaints and the issues about being able to see what the hell you're doing. This is way harder than you'd think because of the the post, you know, the scales. Go ahead and rinse. Yeah, I'm definitely a little I was told this would be more comfortable to use than the uh, than the feather artist or the uh, the commissary the face knife. That's definitely true. I was sort of surprised at how many way how light this was. I expected this to be heavier for some reason, but it is very light. Only problem right now I have is that I don't feel super good and I'm a little bit a little bit shaky anyway, so this might have not have been the best idea. But you know what? Nothing ventured, nothing gained. I mean first impressions, certainly this is definitely easier on the face than the uh the feather artist for sure. change hands here Let's dry my hands off a little bit other piece of advice I've gotten which I think is actually brilliant advice which is that if you drop this don't try to catch it just let it clatter whatever damage happens happens better that than well you know I don't know about the rest of you, but I shave without my glasses on, and in moments like this, I mean, I wonder if that's a smart idea. Day and a half worth of growth. time seeing what I'm doing here. Yeah, I'm gonna go on a limb and say I probably should have waited a day or two to do this. Yeah, that 
We got a little tiny spot right there. I can just feel it's because my skin is pulling, not holding my skin tight. I'm trying to keep as acute angles I can. Yeah, don't worry about that. That's just wet now. For those of us with the larger noses, I think this is probably the hardest part to do. Hmm, that's a little, I'm gonna go definitely, that is rough. But first time out. Yeah, that is definitely not close yet, but that's 100% understandable. First pass on that. I think I'm gonna go for another pass. Why not go for with the grain? I will say this, it is definitely more comfortable on the face uh, in parts than the, uh, the, the Artist Pro. Definitely seems more forgiving. A little less likely just to poop, pop right into the skin. Let's see what we get here. Let's add a little bit of water to that. Make sure that's a little bit wet. Give a nice slick lather. And to be fair, this is really more for funsies because I really don't think I'm going to be going over to straight razor shaving. For one, as much as the, as the experience of honing sounds like fun. It's just one of those extra things to have to do where you gotta hone and you gotta stop and there's a lot of maintenance to do and uh, just rub my hands with a little bit of alum. I mean, that seems like kind of a fun thing to do. It seems like a good, a good way to spend some time, a good little hobby, but I don't think it's gonna be for me, but we'll see, you never know, never say never. All right, I wanna try. Extending the scales a little bit further. Let's just see. So I really would consider it to be nothing more than a practice shape. If you're wondering why I'm pulling my skin over here while I'm shaving my chin, because I don't know what I'm doing. Just, I don't know. All right, here we go. Trying to keep a very shallow angle where I can. Yeah, you know, it's um, it's a little nerve-wracking. I mean, I think I would be, you know, lying a bit and say that this feels much more close to the skin, as they say. Non-dominant hand, definitely much harder. Just don't feel like I have the uh, level of control, obviously, when you're encountering some resistance cutting through the hair. Yeah, I'd have to say, really, the moment of putting the blade on your skin seems to be the...
if some of you are watching this and think to yourself, he should stop right now, don't worry, you're not the only one thinking that. That's me too. But guess what? There's one more little piece. Yeah, that part feels pretty hard right there. Not how true of a set of do that. Well, I will say this, for those of you that make this look easy in the videos, props to you, because it's definitely not. Okay, I am going to stop right there because I am not going to make the mistake I made last time, which was forgetting to follow my own advice, which is stop, don't shave where there's no ladder, stop making repeat passes. Well, that, that was interesting. That was actually pretty good. That's a little bit scary putting that blade on your skin. Clearly, you need to sort of get a good feel for the, you know what it feels like when it actually touches. Get some practice. I think the ladder needs to be a little bit different, actually. All right, but that was still actually a very comfortable shave, too. Basically, with the grain passes, with with the grain feel, it's pretty good. Obviously, pretty rough against, well, to be understood, because, of course, I didn't go against the grain. Wow, pretty nice, actually. Skin feels pretty good. <laughs> no damage done. Sweet. All right. Now, there's an additional new product. So, Ecoloniali soap. Fantastic stuff. I, I love the soap. It, it lathers really easily. It's got a great face feel during the shave. Um, it's slick, protective, easy to build a thick, dense lather if you want, or kind of a sort of a wet, soapy one if you want to go that way. Um, i go ahead and uh, dry off my face a little bit. Definitely recommended. Um, it is a little bit pricey, so if you want to sort of avoid the uh, um, avoid the terracotta dish, that definitely does add to the price. You can just get the uh, get the refill pucks straight up and put them in whatever dish you want to. Um, so I'm going to be using a new aftershave as well today. This is another of the Mirsol. I've had the Limon before, which I really really liked. Um, this is the Agua Balsamica, and this is a. Um, rosemary, thyme, and lavender-based aftershave. I will say this does smell very herbal. This is not like a sweet traditional aftershave scent. It really does smell very strongly of those, those three herbs. Um, it is a very toning aftershave, so I would not recommend using this along with something like the Allen Block. You can really smell the rosemary. There's definitely a touch of the, the lavender and the thyme, but for me the rosemary is the, the key key scent in there. Ah, it just feels so good going on. If you had a bit of a rough shave or if you'd like to have a bit of more toning aftershave, definitely recommend the uh, the Agua Balsamica. And I will say that the scent on this lasts quite a long time. It is not an effervescent scent that disappears after a minute or two it will stay on for quite a while. So if you're planning to use this aftershave and then use like an eau de cologne or something like that afterwards, um, or maybe a scented uh, aftershave balm, you're gonna have to think very carefully about what those combinations will be like. Um, I've also found that if you 
smell your hands, this will still smell very strongly and in fact you may want to wash your hands when you're done because this, this scent will, will linger for quite a bit. Um, it's very pleasant, it's a bit on the medicinal side so if you like that this reminds me a bit of the 888 aftershave in that regard uh, but still uh, feels great on the face, makes your skin feel fantastic, highly recommended. Second uh, of the three Mirasols I've got, I've tried the Limon, I've got the Agua Balsamica and then for a future shave um, I'll be using the uh, the F Extra, which is a much more traditional, kind of a classic aftershave scent as well. Well, that's really it for me. Thank you all again very much for watching. Let me just recap today. I've shaved today with this Boker 5 eighths. Fantastic. It was really cool. Thank you so much, Eric Stewart, for the, uh, for the gift. Um, I will pass this on back to you after I've shaved with it a couple more times. Really appreciate that. Um, just want to say thank you again to Steve Bento for making this... Uh, the shaving brush is a wonderful gift and I really do appreciate it. I use it, uh, use it in the rotation all the time. Um, and for those of you that are enjoying these videos and commenting, thank you again so much. And until next time, goodbye.